in. Uh, if you want to join in, books are available at the class for $20 each. All during the month of January, we're having coffee and cookies after each worship service. So if you have a few moments, just uh, enjoy fellowship and some coffee and cookies. We invite you to stay and mingle with uh, our friends here. Confirmation classes for all of those youth from 6th grade through 12th grade who have not yet been confirmed meet in the youth wing today at 1040 a.m. And uh, if they haven't participated yet, today could be the first day that they do so. Melinda Losey is going to come up and share with us a moment on our opportunities for service. Good morning. I hope um, as you came in, the ushers would have given you a opportunities for service booklet. So if you haven't gotten one, please um, raise your hand and the ushers will come bring you one. Um, as you know, I come before you each year to talk about our booklets. Um, these booklets list all the different ministries that we have here at First Methodist. There are over 90 ministries that you can become involved in. Greeting, ushering, cooking, teaching, uh, being involved with our partner school, Combray Fondell, being uh, a worker at the community clinic, feeding the hungry at Abraham's tent. So many ways you can become involved. God has been preparing us for this moment when we pray about where he can use us in this world, make it a better place. One person can make a difference. Each one of us, young or old, can use the gifts and talents that God has given us to make this world a better place. He will equip us. He will help us to connect to our church family, those we're working alongside with in ministry. He will help us connect to our community, those outside the walls of our church, that are in need. And ultimately, he will give us a greater purpose in our lives. We may never know in our lifetime how the efforts have affected the people we serve, but we do have the faith and confidence in Jesus Christ that he is using us as we are needed in whatever capacity that may be to do good. So please pray about where God is leading you to serve for the coming year. After you have looked through the booklet and have read, um, read through it, on the back page is a commitment card. And if you would, mark the things that you have been in ministry already and you want to stay in those. Be sure and check them off. And also anything new that you'd like to try, mark that as well. There's also a place on the back page for you to put your contact information. And this is really important. That helps us update our records in the church office as far as emails and phone numbers. So if you would make sure you fill that part out completely. Then bring that card back to you, back with you to church next Sunday and we'll bring them forward as an act of worship during the service. All the ministries that take place here in this building and beyond the walls of this building have to have the support of people willing to make a commitment to serve. We are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in this world and I ask you to remember that this week as you pray about where you will serve. Thank you so much. for a time to get it right. Lord, I assert that as you uh, speak to us this morning, that you would open our hearts, open our minds to receive whatever it is you would have us to hear this morning. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand together, greet uh, uh, someone you may or may not know with the love of God this morning. I love the time that we spend in the presence of God, and I love declaring his goodness. This morning, as we sing these songs, let's sing it from our heart this morning. This is a declaration for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones, for your community. Let's sing it together, that we love the Lord with all our hearts, our mind, our souls. Come on. Everybody say it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. 
with all your strength. Sing it with us. Love the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Here we go. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all, with all your strength. Everybody, let's celebrate. Come on. Let's declare, I will serve. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Are you going to serve Him? I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, with all my heart, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve the Lord. With all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Come on, let's celebrate. Love you, I will love Say it. you. I will praise you. I will praise you. Now you say I will serve you. I will serve you. You say it and declare, I'll trust you. I will trust you. I'll trust with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my soul. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Hallelujah. And that's our declaration this year. I will love the Lord with my heart, my soul, my mind, everything. He wants it all today. Come on, let's sing this next song. We're declaring it to our God, the God of wonders. Above all, he is the king of glory. Here we go. Come on, people of God. We're here to worship him, declare his goodness together. Lift your voices as we sing this. This is a truth of our God. He is the Lord of all creation. Come on, sing this. Let's declare it. Lord of all creation. Lord of all creation. Of water, earth, and sky. Water, earth, and sky. The heavens are. The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord and all my He is the God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy. He's holy, y'all. And the universe. Today, early in the morning, here's what I'll do. I will celebrate the light and give up when I stumble in the 
be seated at this time. We're going to take this moment to give uh, to our God right at this moment. And as you're doing that, please continue to sing along with us, to pray with us this morning. Uh, we're going to be continuing the new series that Brother Weldon has started about uh, challenging questions. And uh, I'm so excited to hear what he's going to tell us about that today because his topic today is about something that we can all relate to. It's what we see in the world, we see in our lives. Sometimes there's hurt there's suffering, there's evil in the world, and we may question and wonder why that is. If our God is so awesome and powerful and sovereign, why does this happen? But this song we're going to sing next helps us remember that no matter what, he's a good, good father. And our father loves us, and he protects us, and he keeps us and guides us through all of these storms. And as we take this time to give, let's go ahead and sing it together. Sing from your hearts this morning, people of God. Can we get those words? I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. And you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Declare it. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Sing it out. It's who. It's who you are. And I'm loved. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I've been. I've seen many searching for it. Far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only our God provides because you know just what we need before we even say a word. You're a good, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. 
morning as we prepare to hear a word from God. And as we go forth throughout the week, I hope you can sing this to yourself and minister to yourself and to your loved ones. And no matter what comes this year, no matter what you may face, you can declare that our God is good and that he's perfect in all of his ways and that every little thing is meant for the perfecting of your faith, your love for him. Let's sing this last verse together from our hearts because his love is so undeniable. Come on, sing this. Let's declare it together. Love so undeniable I can hardly speak. There's a peace. Peace so unexplainable I can Come on. hardly speak. order of service you'll find a blue insert and in there are all the prayer concerns that our church submit and if you ever have a prayer request to submit to one of our ushers uh, in the red registration pads that you use to sign in each week there are some of those prayer cards and we just took up the offering but you can also drop them in the offering plates as you come to take communion this morning if you have an additional prayer request and those prayers are prayed over as soon as the service is over and then are sent out to our prayer warriors throughout the week and then the ones that we ask that are, can be shared publicly we put into this uh, bulletin because we believe in the power of prayer. Let us go to God and pray at this moment. Holy and gracious and glorious God, we come to you asking for peace today. We come to you in the midst of chaos. Sometimes we're so busy, sometimes we're so tired, sometimes we just don't even know which way is up. But we come into your house, Lord, to lay down our burdens. We come here to give you thanks and praise. We're so thankful that we are able to be in a place where we can worship you freely, that we can lift up our voices, that we can sing praises to your name because you are so good. Every blessing that has come our way is your doing. And sometimes we even forget to think about all the ways that you have blessed us. Lord, we know that there are storms in our lives. Sometimes we get worried and overwhelmed and anxious about what's to come, about the uncertainties in this world. And sometimes even the things that we do know are pretty scary. When we get bad news, when relationships get torn apart, when addiction takes over, when anger and wrath feel like it's never going to end and jealousy is raiding in our lives, Lord, help us remember you. Help us turn our lives over to you to surrender ourselves to the only power that can make any change, and that is the power of Jesus Christ. Lord, we do need you each and every day in our lives. We ask that you help us to become better people, to be the people that Jesus taught us to be. May your spirit enter our lives and help us to seek your will, not what we want to do, but what you have planned for us. It's better than any plan that we could ever make. Lord, 
Help us. Open our eyes. Open our hearts. And open our ears to your wisdom. And help us to follow it this day and forevermore. I pray these things in the name of our healer, savior, and friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Katie, for that prayer. Uh, this morning, we're going to uh, introduce a song that may be new to you. Uh, so we're going to take a, a moment to teach the beginning of it to you. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fount that I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. Simple song. Let's stand together and sing that this morning. And let's sing it from our hearts for our families. And let it be a declaration to our God this morning as we sing to him together. Let's go. Let the kingdom of my heart be the to where I run. The fonts that I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the kingdom of my heart be the shadow. Good morning. Our scripture today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. 
As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. This is the word of the Lord. If you could ask God one question, and God would answer that question, what would that question be? A national survey was taken some time ago that asked adults all across the country that question. If you could ask God any question, what would it be? And the vast majority of them said this, I would ask God why there is suffering and pain in the world today. Our series of sermons is on challenging questions in a skeptical age based on two books. The Ten Most Common Objections to Christianity by Alex McFarlane and Ask, Faith Questions in a Skeptical Age by Scott Jones and his son Arthur Jones. Last Sunday was on the question, how can I believe in a God that I can't prove? And our focus today is on a challenging question that people ask about the Christian faith. If God is all-powerful, and God is all good, then why is there suffering and evil in the world today? The book of Job in the Old Testament that was written about 600 years before Christ is all about suffering. The whole book, all 42 chapters long, is about suffering. But suffering is not only found in the book of Job. It's found all around us today. And we see it all the time. On a beautiful morning in September of the year 2001, out of nowhere, a living hell was brought upon the people of New York City and Washington, D.C., and to all of the country, and thousands upon thousands of people were killed. A massive hurricane comes to our state, causing havoc and massive destruction. A serial killer strikes. A community, and everyone is just terrified with A young mother who has a promising future dies of cancer. A police officer is killed in the line of duty. And so often we are stunned and in disbelief and we say, I I just cannot understand how this happens. I just cannot figure it out. It's all around us today and we see it all the time. So the question is, if God is so good, why is there suffering and evil in the world today? John Stott was one of the greatest theologians in Christian history. Here's what he said. The fact of suffering undoubtedly constitutes the greatest single challenge to the Christian faith. In our scripture reading for today from the Gospel of John, the disciples of Jesus pointed to a man who was blind and they asked Jesus a question. Who sinned that he was born blind? The answer of Jesus? No one. So our question for today is, why is there suffering and evil? Now, personally, I think it's so important to think about this question and to struggle with it. And I just believe that it's only fair that everyone has to give an answer to the question. It's not only Christians who should struggle and try to give an answer to this question, but everyone should. Why do Christians have to be the only one to try to answer that question? The atheist should give an answer for evil and suffering and how they handle it. The Buddhist should give an answer. The Hindu, the Muslim. I'm going to share with us this morning the Christian answer for dealing with suffering and evil in the world today. And I'm going to give this answer, and as I do so, these are things that appeal to me and make sense to me in a personal way. I'm going to share with us eight words, two words at a time throughout the sermon, that have really helped me in struggling with this question. 
Here are the first two words, a sheet of papers in the bulletin to write these down. The first two words that helped me to understand this question and to get a handle on it are fallen world. We live in a fallen world. It goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. It goes back to Adam and to Eve. It goes back to this fact of scripture and theology. This world that we live in is a fallen world. It's a broken world. And so in the midst of sunshine and happy days, there is cancer, and there is sickness, and earthquakes, and hurricanes, Philadelphia Eagles, and tor tornadoes, and crime, and hatefulness, and racism. Our world is a broken world, and so broken things happen. In the Gospel of John, chapter 16, Jesus pointed to this truth. He said, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus called it out. He spoke the truth. He said, in this world you will have trouble. And it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. We live in a fallen world. The next two words that personally helped me to get a handle on this question of suffering and evil Free will. That means very simply that all of us have a choice. Now once again, it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. They had a choice to make, to obey God or to not obey God. And they made their choice. And today, we have a choice. God actually gives to us the freedom to do the right thing or to not do the right thing. It's called free will. And free will has consequences. This incredible gift of freedom that God has given to us is a blessing, and boy, it's a burden. Here's the truth. God did not create evil, but God did create us with a free will. And so God created the possibility of evil. I want to say that again because that is basic Christian theology and understanding suffering and evil. God did not create evil, but God created us with a free will and thus created the possibility of evil. I read an article this past week that claimed that 90% of all the suffering in the world comes about because of the bad choices of people. Things like war, drug abuse, racism, hatred, crime. In the Old Testament, God spoke to the people of Israel out in the desert. And he said, this day I've called heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you today life and death. Blessings are a curse. Choose life. He's given us free will, the ability to choose. Check out the morning newspaper any day of the week. And so often... The bad things that take place in our community are the consequences of bad choices. An assault, a robbery, a drunk driver, a shooting. God didn't want any of that. That's not God's plan. It's not God's doing. God told us to stay away from those things. But so often bad things come about because we push away from God and we push away from the right decisions. A pastor wrote these words that I found interesting. He said, on a recent trip to the dentist, while the dentist was working on my teeth, he said to me, I don't believe in God. Now, this dentist knows what I do for a living, how important my faith is to me, but I didn't say anything back. He then said, how can God exist and still allow all the suffering and pain in the world? I didn't say anything till he was finished and had put away his drill. And then the pastor said to him, I don't believe in dentist. He didn't know what to say. So I clarified for him that if there are dentists in the world, how can there be so many people who have broken teeth and infected teeth and missing teeth? And so I said, I don't believe in dentist. He answered, hey, I can't do anything for somebody who doesn't come to me to have their teeth fixed. And then the pastor said, you know, that's how it is with God. It's called free will. The next two words are so helpful to me when I struggle with this question. Hang on. Hang on. In a world of suffering and evil, 
hang on. It's not always going to be this way. This world, as we know it today, with pain and suffering and evil all around us, is not always going to be this way. Someday, in God's own time, God is going to make everything right. A brilliant writer and theologian, N.T. Wright, said this, Since the fall of creation, God has been putting the world to rights. And one day, through Jesus, he is going to make all things new. It's so important to understand this truth. We have not seen the end of the story. We only see a little portion of the story. We've not seen the end. But some great day, there is finally going to be an end of suffering, an end of evil. That day is certainly coming. The last book of the Bible points to that great day. Here's what it says in the book of Revelation chapter 21. He looked into the future and he said, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he shall live with them. They shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or crying or pain, for the old things have passed away. And that is certainly going to happen in God's time. Hang on. A really good movie came out in the last few weeks on Netflix. Uh, It's not for kids, of course. It's for adults. It's called The Irishman starring Al Pacino and Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci. In the movie, Al Pacino plays Jimmy Hoffa. There's a pretty good scene in the movie about Jimmy Hoffa and how he couldn't stand for somebody to be late in coming to a meeting for him. I mean, it really irritated him if someone was late for a meeting. He drew a line in the sand at 10 minutes. If you were 10 minutes late to the movie, that was it, and the meeting was off. This morning... We need to understand that God's timing is different from our timing. And God's timing is always right. And God's clock is ticking. In the book of 2 Peter in the New Testament, it says, A day with the Lord is like, can you fill in that blank? A day with the Lord is like a thousand years. God's timing is different from our timing. But God's timing is always right. The great Hall of Fame catcher for the Yankees, Yogi Berra, once said, it ain't over till, can you complete that? That's sad. You can can answer for Yogi Berra, but but you couldn't do 2 Peter. Just kidding. Yogi Berra said, it ain't over till it's over. That's the truth. All of history is going somewhere. All of history is pointed to the coming again of Christ and to a great day of judgment that's coming where God is going to make everything right again. Talking about suffering and evil and wrestling with that subject, those two words are so important. Hold on. God is going to make everything right. It's not over till it's over. Sometimes in driving in very bad weather, we all know this, it's pretty hard to see the road in front of us. If I'm driving on Interstate 10 and it's pouring down rain and I'm behind a big old 18-wheeler, sometimes you you just get disoriented. What really helps me is to follow behind an 18-wheeler and to follow behind the taillights of that 18-wheeler. Then even if I can't see what's around, even if I can't even see the road, I can see those taillights and I'm going to be okay. That's the way it is in my own life. Sometimes in life, I, I just can't see what's going on around. Sometimes in life, things get so stormy and foggy, I can't even see the road in front of me. But if I follow the light of God, God's going to lead me through. Hold on. Hold on. God has all of eternity to make things right. The final two words mean everything. God knows. God understands. God can see our suffering. And through grace, good things can actually come to our lives through dark days. 
Here's the promise of God that I hold on to with all my heart during dark days. It's found in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28. For all things work together for good for those who love God. That's the promise of scripture. All things work together for good. It doesn't mean God caused everything to happen that's bad in our lives. Things happen because we live in a fallen world and free choice. But in the midst of bad things, God can work beautiful things. In writing the sermon for today, I pictured a young mother who's taking her baby, a year old, to see the doctor. Baby's sick. He needs medicine to make him well. And so the doctor pulls out a needle. There's pain. There's screaming. There's crying. The baby looks at his mother with betrayal. How could you do this to me? The man is hurting me. This is horrible. I hate this. And so he screams and he cries, but his mother understands because she can see the whole picture. God knows. God understands. God sees. And good things can eventually come to our lives from the dark day of our lives. All things work together for good. I want us real quickly this morning to consider a bunch of positive things that can actually come to us from suffering. Some good things that can happen to us from suffering. This is from Alex McFarland's book, A Sheet of Papers in Our Bulletin, for you to have a copy of this and uh, take home with you. Follow with me as I read them quickly. Suffering can uncover what's really inside of our hearts. Suffering breaks us of pride. Suffering can deepen our desire for God. Suffering can help us to grow. Suffering can breed humility. Suffering can be a warning of something that's potentially worse. Suffering can jumpstart our prayer life. Suffering can prompt a lost person to receive Christ. Suffering can lead a Christian to confess sin. Suffering helps us to deepen our trust in God. Suffering can deepen our appreciation for the Bible. Suffering can take our eyes off of this world and ourselves. Suffering can teach us firsthand that God truly is sufficient. Suffering connects us with other people. Along these same lines, I was talking with a doctor here in town this past week. She'd been sick and in bed for two weeks with the flu, and she said to me, Reverend Weldon, I didn't like that at all at the time. I just hated it. But now that it's all said and done, I'm kind of glad that it happened because it helps me to understand my patients who are sick. It connects us with other people. Number 15 on our list, suffering can create an opportunity to witness. Suffering can lead a person into Christian ministry. Suffering can make us grateful for what we had or still have and suffering can position our lives to bring more glory to God. I'm just saying, in the middle of suffering and dark days in our lives, hold on to the fact that God knows. God sees. God understands. And that eventually, God works all things for good. So our big question for today is this. If God is good... Why is there suffering and evil in the world? I hold on to eight words. Fallen world, free will, hang on, God knows, God sees. Let us pray. Lord, this is something that we really struggle with because at times in our life we see pain, we see loss and death and suffering, and confusion. Lord, we sometimes can't help it, but we ask, why? Help us to know, Heavenly Father, that only in you and in your word can our answers be found. And now, Lord, we come to this table this morning to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. We come here this day because you have invited us and you have called us. We know that we don't deserve it. We've sinned and fallen short, and so we come to you for mercy and forgiveness. And as we come to this table today, we're joined with believers down through the centuries who have done this very same thing, remembering the body of Christ which was broken for us.
and the blood of Christ, which was poured out for us. May this truly be a holy time in our lives. May this be the body and the blood of Christ for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us thy as not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord's table is now prepared, and the invitation to Holy Communion is for everybody in the worship center. As I say, every month that we celebrate communion in the Methodist church, we believe in an open communion table, which means everybody is invited. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church. Just have a willingness in your heart to come to know Christ. I'm going to ask those who are serving to please come first, and then you come as the ushers direct. Sweet. 
of the church. And if the Lord is leading you this day to join First United Methodist Church and to give your heart and life to Christ, I invite you to come to the front. And Reverend Katie and I will be so happy to welcome you this day into the kingdom of God and our church membership as we sing together. Till every moment of every day I live Till every moment of every day I want to live, I live Our series of sermons on important skeptical questions that people ask today continues next Sunday morning with the question, did the resurrection of Jesus really happen? Is there historical evidence for it? We'll be talking about that next Sunday morning. Hope you have a great week. As you go from this place, hang on. God knows. God sees. Go now in peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.